In this video, we're going to answer the question, what determines the price of a carbon credit? It's worth noting that we're not talking about carbon allowances, which are given out in the compliance carbon markets or emissions trading schemes around the world. Prices in those markets will simply be determined by the emissions cap that system has set for the year and the level of demand from compliant participants in those markets. So we're going to be talking about carbon credit prices in voluntary carbon markets in this video. While supply and demand determine prices in these markets as well, of course, there are other factors contributing to the level of demand a particular type of credit might see. So the first factor that contributes to the price of a carbon credit is actually what it represents. While the terms carbon credit and carbon offset are often used synonymously, there's an important distinction between the two, and sometimes it can be difficult grammatically to make sure that we're referencing them properly because carbon credit's often used as an umbrella term so forgive me for that, but a carbon credit actually represents one ton of carbon dioxide being reduced from the total emissions in the atmosphere. And on the other hand, a carbon offset actually refers to one ton of carbon dioxide being removed from the atmosphere through sequestration. So while both of them contribute to helping the environment, you'll often see that offsets tend to trade at a higher price since they're actually taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. The second factor that contributes to the price of a particular carbon credit or offset is what type of project they come from. Is the project generating the credits nature-based, like a reforestation project, or is it technology-based, like cook stoves or direct air capture, you know, just to name a few examples. All these different project methodologies have different development costs and levels of demand. The list you see now is all the approved methodologies from the American Carbon Registry alone. This doesn't even account for other types of projects on other registries. But speaking of registries, that's the second factor that would be important in the pricing of a particular credit. The Carbon Registry is a verification body that has strict guidelines carbon project developers must follow to qualify to generate carbon credits or offsets. American Carbon Registry is one of the largest examples, but there are others. Vera and Gold Standard are the first and second largest ones, respectively. So, the credibility of a registry may have an impact on a credit's price. As you could imagine, if a project has its environmental impact verified by a registry no one's ever heard of before, that credit will likely be seen as questionable at best. So moving on, the fourth major factor influencing the price of carbon credits is project rarity. Blue carbon credits are a prime example of this. These credits are derived from nature-based projects involving carbon sequestration through seagrass, salt marshes, or other coastal and marine ecosystems. The most popular type of blue carbon project is from coastal forest mangroves, which are shown in black on the graph here. But as you can see, there are a limited number of potential projects that can be developed in this methodology, as there's only so much coastline that can ultimately be used for carbon projects. Now, quoting from this article from Abatable, at the end of 2022, less than 5 million blue carbon credits have been issued, Comparatively, Red Plus projects had issued over 400 million credits at that time, and almost 90% were issued from only four mangrove restoration projects. So, as you can see, blue carbon credits are quite rare in comparison to Red Plus, and that definitely shows up in the price. Another factor that can play a role in pricing is which country a credit came from. Different host countries can have different implementation costs associated with the production of a credit. You know, for example, it might be more expensive to deal with regulators in a developed nation like the United States in comparison to regulators in a developing country like Sierra Leone, where regulations might be less stringent overall. The sixth factor that will be considered in pricing is the vintage, or what year a carbon credit was produced. Generally speaking, the older a carbon credit is, the less valuable it will be, as standards are continuously updating over time. And lastly, the social benefits involved with the creation of a credit may play a larger role in the price of a credit in the future as well. As of the recording of this video, on a recent investor call, the CEO of Base Carbon, Michael Costa, mentioned that there is potential for market demand to emerge for credits trading at a premium based on their social benefits. So, you know, did the project fund schools in the local area? Do they donate to support other infrastructure or provide jobs to workers in the region? The ideas like these will support the price of a project's credits even more down the line. But yeah, those are all the factors that contribute to the pricing of a carbon credit or offset. 
If you'd like to learn more about the carbon markets, consider watching my playlist explaining how they work in further detail. And thanks for watching.